Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. Say, during World War II, a Polish submarine captain, he looked through his periscope and he saw a Russian cruiser and a German cruiser. His XO asked him, which one should we attack first? The Polish captain said, the German one. Duty before pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my top 10 World War II solo games of all time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take a look at my World War, my top 10 World War II solitaire games of all time. I've played a lot of World War II solitaire games, and it's funny because, you know, just a few years ago, I hardly played any solitaire games at all, and, and it's, it's something I've really come to enjoy. I, I must confess, I, I, I do much prefer playing with other people, but it is fun sometimes just to sit down and play a solitaire game uh, and uh, just have fun with it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the... Uh, my top 10 favorites so far, but I do just have a couple of honorable mentions. First of all, the On to, On to Moscow Solitaire Book War Game from Worthington. It's a great game where essentially you're, you're trying to advance toward Moscow. Uh, you're the Wehrmacht. You're trying to advance toward Moscow. You're trying to take cities. <clears throat> you roll a dice. You got a pen. Uh, fun, fun book war game there. And of course, uh, DVG's uh, Soldiers in Postman's Uniforms. This is a Dave Thompson design. And this is a great war game about the first day of the war with the Germans invading Poland and the, the heroic Pol Polish defenders in um, Danzig in the post office trying to defend themselves. Great, great game there too as well. But now we're going to go ahead and take a look at my 10, my top 10. So uh, number 10 is, an, uh, is another game here from uh, Worthington. And this is a game that it's got a solo version and it's got a two-player version and they are very different games. The two-player version of the game left me just kind of, felt kind of flat with me. I was like, oh, all right, whatever. But I really liked the solitaire version quite a bit. This is Archie's War. Uh, Archie's War from Worthington Games is a game about the Battle of Guadalcanal. And essentially, you are trying to defend Henderson Field. You've got the Japanese coming at you from the left and from the right. They might be able to sneak behind you. So you're trying to move forces desperately to, 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 to block them, to hold them. Uh, while well, at the same time you're trying to prepare uh, repair Henderson Airfield, you're trying to, to get air cover out there. It's just a really good, intense, solitaire game based on the, on the Pacific War there. Uh, uh, really a whole lot of fun. So that is Archie's War. That is uh, my number 10, and that is from Worthington Games. Now my number 9, I'll tell you right now, this is the first and only game on this list that has a bit of a fantasy element to it, has a bit of a supernatural element to it. The others are kind of straight historical games. This one's got a little bit of that in it, but it's just such a good game. This is number nine from Raybox Games. This is Escape from Stalingrad Z. Now, in this game, essentially, you take on the role of uh, either a Russian or a German. You can collect more characters as you go, but you are essentially playing through this, this flip book, uh, and it's almost like a choose-your-own-adventure. You You get through a battle, you survive one of the battles, you can make a decision about where you want to go next. And the game evolves. Of course, you're going to get more equipment, more experiences as you go forward, better weapons. Uh, really, really fun and creepy, so you get a good zombie feel there. But also, too, it's in this cool World War II um, theme. So it's, it's a very unusual game, but it's a really, really fun uh, game here. So Escape from Stalin Stalingrad Z, that is from Raybox. My number eight is another one from Worthington. This was originally published by Victory Point Games back in the day, but this is Malta Besieged. This is a States of Siege game where essentially you are the British defenders of the island of Malta. You've got the German Luftwaffe, the German Kriegsmarine, the, the Italian Navy and Army. They're all coming at you. And at the same time, you're trying to support operations against Rommel in North Africa. It is really good. It is intense, and it is a tough game. But those, those tracks are coming at you. you got to roll to try to push them back, but also accomplish a lot of the other things you want to get done. It's probably one of my favorite States of Siege games. It's definitely on the higher tier of my States of Siege games. And I, I like States of Siege. It's a fun system. And anyway, I really like that one a lot. So that is uh, Malta Besiege. That is number eight, and that is from Worthington Games. My number seven, also from Worthington, this is Bismarck Deluxe Solitaire. Now, Bismarck Deluxe, this was a, it was a, war game, a book war game, and then, of course, they came out with the boxed version of it. But this is, you are the, the Bismarck, the Prince Eugen, and a U-boat 
and you are moving out to engage in different um, battles with the British. But you, you move, then you roll a die, you consult the chart to see what the event is, where the, the, the British are, where their forces are, where the convoys are, and then essentially you fight them and you have to engage in these battles with the British ships. Really a whole lot of fun. Uh, again, it's a great narrative, a lot of luck. There's a lot of luck here with this game, but just some gr a great narrative experience here, a great story that it tells. Um, wonderful, a wonderful naval representation of the, of the Bismarck uh, battles here. Really enjoy it quite a bit. So this is Bismarck Deluxe Solitaire. That is from Worthington. My number six is... Uh, another game from DVG, and it is also in the Valiant Defense series with soldiers in a postman's uniform. This is Castle Itter. Castle Itter tells the story of the very end of the war when uh, you had, uh, was it a French, um, American, uh, uh, German resistance, Austrian resistance, um, all sorts of people. Uh, you actually have German Wehrmacht all working together to defend a castle against SS units. And as you're playing through the game, you know, you're trying to you're, you're trying to shore up your defenses along different sides. You've got tracks leading toward the central location of the house. You're trying to keep them at bay. <clears throat> you can suppress units, just try to keep them from moving forward. Um, but it's it's really fun. Every every turn you're drawing a card that's telling you who's advancing, where they're advancing, they're hitting your defenses on your 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 on the castle itself, bringing bringing it down, making it harder to defend. Really, a great and 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 fun game about this very little known battle at the end of World War II. So I love the history here, but it's just a tremendous game. This was actually the first Valiant Defense game I ever played. It's got a special place in my heart. That is number six, David Thompson design. That is Castle Itter. That is from DVG. My number five is another one from Worthington. Um, this is probably my favorite. Well, it is my favorite of the book war games. This is Coral Sea Solitaire. So it's the carrier battles. Essentially, it's a book war game, so you just need a you know pencil and some die, and you are recreating the battle here where you're committing so many of your aircraft to a cap, a combat air patrol to protect your own plane, and then you're sending the rest to, to take out the enemy. But if you see them, they see you, they come after you, and you have these kind of simultaneous battles. Obviously, you, you do them sequentially, but in theory, they're happening at the same time. So even as you're attacking, you're seeing how many of their guys get past your cap and actually attack your ship. And you're marking off damage on on your ship and and losing fighters and bombers. Great game. I really hope at some point we get a a deluxe board game version of this. Not quite sure how that would work, but I would love to see it. I love carrier battles, um, and I think this would be a very fun uh, boxed game. So that is number five. That is Coral Sea Solitaire from Worthington. My number four is DVG. So far, that's all I'm talking about is DVG and Worthington. That won't be the only thing. Trust me. Uh, this is Lazarus Ridge. Uh, this was the latest of the Valiant Defense series from David Thompson, but this is during the Battle of the Bulge. The Americans are holding a ridge. Uh, they're holding back an entire uh, Panzer Division, I think, for a day. And they're holding this, 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 this ridge here to keep the Germans from advancing. But it's a great, tense, tough game. You're trying to hold back the German onslaught. Again, the Germans are, are trying to take you out. You, you're calling for radio help. You know, you're, you're calling in artillery and stuff. It's really, really, really good. It's, I mean, all the Valiant Defense ones are good, but this one just tells such a great story. I really enjoy it. So that is my number four. That is Lazarus Ridge. That is from DVG. Number three, also from DVG, also Valiant Defense. You guessed it, Pavlov's House. Pavlov's House is, I think it was the first Valiant Defense game um, in the series, and it is a game that is about... The Battle of Stalingrad, you have one house that they were trying to hold. And of course, when, you know, Dave Thompson, uh, he actually came to a school I was teaching at um, uh, about a year and a half ago, and he gave a presentation on it. You can actually see that here on the channel. But he talks about he wanted one of the myths he wanted to dispel. As you hear this myth that these guys were just by themselves, essentially holding off these, these, these German attacks. And what he's trying to show is, well, no, they had significant operational support. They had, you, you know, a lot of people were working to keep them in that house, to keep them fighting the Germans. And he does just an outstanding job of showing both kind of the, the, the tactical 
battle that was happening, but also the kind of the larger operational support that they were receiving and the things that were going, you know, putting up telephone lines and, and, and moving supplies across the river and the anti-aircraft and really, really, really good stuff. I absolutely love Valiant Defense. And in my opinion, Pavlov's house is my favorite. So that's Pavlov's house. That is number three. That is from uh, DVG. Okay. You can all breathe a sigh of relief now. The top two are not DVG and they are not uh, Worthington. So have fun with that. My number two is a game that I kind of wasn't on my radar for a long time. Then I started hearing some good things about it. So I reached out to the people at Revolution Games and they sent me a copy of Stalingrad Advance to the Volga 1942. Stalingrad Advance to the Volga 1942. You were playing the Germans. You are essentially trying to conquer the city of Stalingrad. And as you are attempting to do this, as you're moving forward into these into these spaces, into these zones, there are tokens, and you flip them over, and they have various um, events that they trigger, various things that the, the play off them that you have to deal with. But what I love about this game is, is you're sending your units in, you know, your lead, lead unit, you use that number, you just get a plus one for all your other units there. You need to use support. You need to use artillery and air support in order to, to take these positions. The problem is there is never enough. You never have enough support to go around. And so it is tough. You know, you start the game off strong and it just gets tougher. And, and as you get kind of these dense urban areas, the fighting becomes more intense. So it does a really good job, I think, of kind of abstracting the the horrors of that battle and just the slog of that battle but it does it so well it's such an elegant design it's such a fun design uh, i really got a kick out of this game this is one of those games you play and you just can't get it out of your head for days and weeks following but i love this game this is stalingrad advance of the volga 1942 that is my number two and that is from revolution games all right ladies and gentlemen so uh my number one this is a game i, I just played recently and it's a game that is wow i haven't won it yet but it is so much fun. It is just great because it's so unusual. It's so different. It has a lot of different systems in it, and they all come together beautifully. I am, of course, talking about Halls of Hegra from Tompet Games. Halls of Hegra is a game that is a worker placement game. It's also kind of a bag building game. Um, it's got a lot of different, and of course, just, just basic combat war game stuff going on. So it's got a lot of different systems going on. But what I love here is uh, there's, it's one of those games, again, where there is so much to do. Every turn, there's so much to do, but you only have limited resources. You've got these defenders, but they're different kinds of defenders. You know, there's, there's the military and there's an officer, but then you've got kind of, you know, just like peasants that, that are coming to help. And you've got, um, uh, you know, medics and what have you. But you're essentially pulling them from a bag, but you may, there's a push your luck deal here, because you may pull some of these cards or some of these, these tokens, and then doubt tokens will come out, which means you have to stop, and the last one that you pulled out has to go back. Um, but you, you place your units, you know, some of your units are going to get wounded, and you go ahead and you place them on, um, in kind of the infirmary, so you have to place people to, to kind of nurse them back to health. Uh, some things may get damaged, you have to repair them. You can shovel snow and you can pull out new rooms and new areas that you can go to that can help you defend. Um, you've got guns, of course, that you can fire the guns uh, at different targets on the board. You have to send out runners to go get supplies and they may get trapped by German patrols. Uh, gosh, there's just so much about this game I like. It was such... You know, again, this is one that wasn't on my radar, and then suddenly everybody was talking about it. I'm like, I need to play that. And Tampa Games reached out, and they, they sent me a copy. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, this is such a good game. Really, really liked Halls of Hegra. If you're looking for, you know, a solitaire game that packs a punch, that's got a lot of different systems in it, um, you're really going to like Halls of Hegra. This is one that I think Euro gamers would like and war gamers would like because there's, there's something in there for everybody. Great game. That is Halls of Hegra. That is my number one World War II solitaire game of all time. And that is from Tompa Games. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, you tuning in and uh, joining me today. Please, please, please let me know what are your favorite uh, 
World War II solitaire games. I'm always eager to learn what, what you guys are playing. And also, too, uh, let me know, what do you think about my list? Do you, do you, have you played these games? Do you like these games? Do you think they should have been on the list? Do you think they not should have been on the list? Um, I, I'm very eager to hear what you have to say, so, so, I, so I'd love to hear back from you on that. Uh, also, too, please leave a comment here on YouTube, Board Game Geek, uh, you know, on our Facebook page. We love hearing from you in all these places. And I'd ask you to check out my other channel. That's Cody Carlson, Ph.D., where we talk about military history, books on history. I post some of my lectures on there, so please check that out. It would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to that channel as well. And I'd also ask you to please leave a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek when we uh, post that there. And if you are a big fan of the channel, you like what we do here, I would humbly ask you to go ahead and click on the Super Thanks button uh, and uh, leave a tip. We would really appreciate it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, during World War II, the British soldiers often said of the Americans in their country, they were overpaid, oversexed, and over here. To which the American response was, the British were underpaid, undersexed, and under Eisenhower. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground, it's a long time. Hello, Cody. <laughs> <laughs>